Midnight with Mika Mika. I am back. Um, I just want to, first of all, say thank you to everyone who has stuck with me this long. I have been waiting patiently for another podcast. I am so sorry. Life has gotten really crazy, really, really, really busy, but I have not neglected you. I have so much to share with you today. And I will have snippets of other things that have happened in the past, in the future, in other episodes. I'll just throw them in. So let's get started. My name is Shamika Clark. You can find me on Instagram as Mika Mika Shop. You can find me on Etsy as Mika Mika. You can find me on Ravelry as Shamika Knits. And you can also find my YouTube channel, Mika Mika Shop, where my uh, podcast, Knit Night with Mika Mika, is. And um, hmm, where do I want to start off? Um, today is Sunday, November 26th. Um, I am in the throngs of, let's see, Rhinebeck has passed, so I'm going to talk to you about that. And also, I'm in the throngs of this Nana Suimo knit along and a bunch of other knit alongs. I know you guys are, excuse me, I know you guys are very excited about all the knit alongs that I have going on or that I'm participating in. And I really love to, um, just talk about like even if my friend is having a knit along and I'm not really fully fledged into it I just like to spread the word because it's so much fun you meet so many people you get to chit chat you meet people online and then you, you know a couple years later or maybe even months later you get to meet them in Rhinebeck or you get to meet them you know wherever you may fly to knitting festivals or on yarn crawls or just whatever so it is an amazing way to not only have uh, a, 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 a group of peers that are making the same uh, project as you, but also to meet new friends and to interact via social media. I would like to thank everyone for joining the Ravelry group and I will just make a quick shout out to everyone who has, I think has joined since Edinburgh or since right before Edinburgh since March, um, which was my last, last podcast. So I'm gonna go down the list right now. Um, Yarn for Kim, The Thistle Hollow, B Hugs, Sakadia, Creative CC, Sassy Book Lady, Shonda Faye, Alice is Here, Mrs. Smith 615, Nina TW 3766, Sky Hag, Keta Vern, Miss Lolo Knitter 3, Gemstar 29, Marty SG, Knitting Counts, Sylvia 1002, Yarn Tripping, Angela Da, ISAD Faith, Brenda Lou Scott, Buddy G Switzer. Thank you all for joining the Ravelry group. And I'm sorry that it hasn't been like totally a lot going on, but there will be much more coming up. And let's get into that. Now, the last, when last we left off, I was doing the Find Your Fade Knit Along for the summer, and I call it the Summer Fade KAL. That has since ended. Um, I had, um, in all plans to end it August 31st, but I moved the deadline to the uh, summer solstice or the end of the, the, sorry, the autumnal equinox, which was I think September 21st or 23rd, can't remember off the top of my head. But um, I had done that to give people more time to, uh, more time to do, uh, you know, do their, um, their, little, um, their knitting. Oh, what am I saying? Oh, so sorry guys, it's been a while. Um, so it is time for me to get prices going. Um, before I start, I want to actually show you where I am on my Find Your Fade. And then I will pick a winner because you have waited too long and I am so sorry. So I will be right back with my laptop so that I can pull numbers as well as my Find Your Fade. Hold on one second. All right. Okay guys, so... My Find Your Fade Knit Along, my Summer Fade Knit Along <laughs> was for anyone who did a Find Your Fade, um, bleh, Find Your Fade shawl or the uh, Find Your Fade sweater that came out shortly thereafter um, in the summer. So I will honestly say I did not do as much as I wanted to. This is my Find Your Fade and I've only gotten to the third color. Um, I had to rip it out a few times because the lace part was just, it got a little wonky and the middle seam was kind of veering off to the side, which was a little bit 
strange and I had to rip it back and do it over. So I finally got the hang of it. However, um, there were a slew of other knitting projects that got in the way so I couldn't finish. So yes, I'm a bad knit along uh, program, uh, not programmer. What do you call me? What do you, what do you call? Knit along organizer. I'm a really bad one, but I am so sorry. I would like to, um, you know, just fix it if I can. <laughs> so without further ado, I am going to have um, two prizes pulled actually. Um, so the first prize is going to be for the person who finished before the first deadline of August 31st and then the second um, poll will be, um, the prize will be stitch markers for the person who um, came in between August 31st and the autumnal equinox which was September 23rd or something, I can't remember off the top of my head, science was a long time ago. So anyway, uh, let's see, let's get this phone going here, Siri. Pull a number between 1 and 10. Okay. Siri doesn't want to listen to me right now. She's being a bit bratty. Siri, please pick a number between 1 and 10. It's 3. It's 3. So, who was number 3 on the list? Let's scroll up and see. And number three was, okay, computer, can you move a little faster here? Because these people want to know who is the winner. Number three was, is, huh, post was deleted because the person, I don't know. They must have just, it's, it's, it wasn't a chatter thread and they started chattering. So I will pull it on the number. Siri, please pick a number between one and 10. The answer is nine. The answer is nine. Okay, number nine, we have, Do da da da. Honey Bunny, three, two, three. Honey Bunny 323, I know you personally. Um, I will find you and get you your skein of Hedgehog. Please tell me what color, what your top three colors are and I will be sure to get that skein to you. Okay, Honey Bunny 323. Um, and now let's pull for the second uh, section. Um, Siri, please pick a number between 11 and 16. The answer is 11. The answer is 11. And 11 will be Manakori. She's one of my friends in Greece. I am going to send her some beautiful stitch markers. I will um, just put a post up. I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to reach out to her to find out what type of stitch markers she likes because I have some Christmas ones coming up um, to see if, if that's her thing. If not, then I have a bunch of other ones. I'll just have her choose a few um, from a few in my shop um, and I'll send that to her in Greece so she will be really happy to get those I'm sure so yes I pulled it finally my find your fade knit along is done my um, shawl isn't but you know things happen so I'm gonna keep going down my list giveaways while we have more giveaways I want to as a, okay, so many things have happened. I have hit uh, over a thousand subscribers. I've hit over a thousand subscribers on, uh, over 2,000 on, on Instagram. And um, I've been, you know, hanging out with my friend Christy Glass. And since her um, interview, it's just been a lot of people coming on and wanting to watch the podcast. And I thank you guys so much. Um, so I actually have two uh, things that I want to give away. Um, okay, so when I went to Edinburgh, I met up with Anna Freeberg, who is a beautiful and talented sock designer. And I actually tested one of her patterns for her. I, um, I posted it on Instagram many moons ago, but she has come out with a mystery knit along for her socks. And she also has another pair of socks that she um, wants me to give away. So we have two giveaways for sock patterns, which is absolutely awesome. Anna, I want to thank you so much for sending me the 
um, the the patterns to give away and you are such a knitting genius like I just can I just say like the sock heels are something totally different than what I'm used to but it's so when you look at the math that's involved in it it's so like on point and so like just perfect so I really 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 am excited about her patterns and um, they um, because of the gauge they go for a different range of sizes and it's really 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 beautiful so the um, mystery knit along is over so the town wall socks are actually um, finished and completed now so you can see what the full sock looks like and her second sock that she is um, giving away is called Pendulia Calanae I hope I said that right um, I'm gonna put a list of what it is at the bottom and I'm going to put up pictures so um, yeah so check in the Ravelry group if you're a member you're definitely definitely this is what being a member is all about you can join into these giveaways and um, I've been getting a lot of requests uh, of people wanting to send me things to give away so there's gonna be a bunch more so I um, I'm going to put two threads in the Ravelry group for the socks, I'm going to put a prompt in. I'm not sure what the prompt is yet, but we will find out um, when um, when this video posts. So thank you once again, Anna Freeberg, and I am very happy for you and all of your sock pattern, everything that's going on, and um, I'm just happy to be able to extend the knitting love somewhere else through you. So thank you so much. Let's talk about knit alongs because I know you guys love it when I tell you all the knit-alongs that I know that are going on and trust me I am not the authority on all of them but I do have a slew of podcaster friends and a slew of designer friends who they like to have knit-alongs so um, a few have come and gone and ended so I'm just gonna let you know what I'm really involved in now I have actually four that I'm actually in the throngs of doing right now so uh, is it four or is it three hmm no, 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 it's four. Yes. So, <laughs> first knit along, the Down Cellar Studio Pigskin Party. So this is a knit along that happens from the beginning of football season, American football season, to the end. So we have until Super Bowl Sunday to finish whatever it is we're knitting. Now, the thing with this is, for every amount of yardage you knit, you get a certain amount of points. You get a touchdown, or if if you knit 100, 100 yards, or if you knit between 1 to 99 yards, you will get a uh, three-point conversion. So everything can add up. It's really cool if you make a sweater because you could get blitz points, which I think is 500 or is it 600? Something. But basically, the more points you have, the more chances you have of winning prizes. And I actually have a prize in the, the pool. Um, I have a set of stitch markers that are football inspired. I made a pair of stitch markers in Giants colors because I'm a New York Giants fan. Actually, I'm not really a Giants fan. Let's let's just go back a little ways here. I had a great time watching them in the Super Bowl when they won, but um, I'm not really a big football fan, but I do love to have team spirit whenever it is necessary. So for this, in, in all intents and purposes for this podcast, let's just say I'm a Giants fan. Okay, so... <laughs> I, um, I, so basically, if you're a diehard football fan, or even if you're not a diehard football fan, you just want to have some type of football stitch markers with your team's colors, or maybe you want to give it to your friend or something else, let me know. I can custom make them in the colors that are specifically for you. So even if it's not an NFL team, even if it's like a high school team or a college team, I can definitely help you out. So I have these stitch markers and I have a whole bunch of them that I can custom make. So I'm doing that for the for the pigskin party. If you are if you do belong to the pigskin party, there is a coupon code, but you have to be in the pigskin party to know what it is. So it will be posted in the Ravelry group for the Dow Cellar Studio Pigskin Party podcast. Sorry guys, I can't tell the whole world. I've been sworn to secrecy. But anyway, um, that's the first one. Secondly, I am doing the Outlander knit along, which is running from the time the Outlander season started to the time it's ending. Now that um, knit along, I think it's going to end on December 10th. I think that's the day of the season finale, but I am not sure, don't quote me on it. I tried to look at stars um, to find out 
and I keep getting these things with spoilers and I really don't want to see the spoilers so I kind of stopped looking but I kind of saw a December 10th pop up in there so I'm thinking that might be it um for those of, who, of you who have not watched Outlander you should start it's really 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 good I love the show um it's about a woman who touches a stone in Scotland and goes back in time over 100 years and subsequently falls in love and has to deal with her life now um and <laughs> it's just an amazing story I love it it's just I love it so you should check it out too and the third knit along that I am involved in is Nana Suimo. so Nana Suimo is national knit sweater in a month so November is the month for Nana Remo, which is National Write, a novel in a month, month. And you have to write 50,000 words. So Nana Suimo is a play off of that where you have to knit a sweater of 50,000 stitches. So I am knitting a sweater and I, I think I can actually get it done. We'll see how much knitting I get done today, but I will go more into that in whips. Um, the last knit along that I am doing, I'm so happy to be doing this. Um, I'm actually going to start now because I need to get on track with my Nana Suimo before I can really knit something else. But I'm going to work on the, let's see, Jukefeld. I think that's how you pronounce it. Ellie, if I did it wrong, I am so sorry. You must teach me. Um, it's a Norwegian knitting uh, pattern written in English, but uh, it is the mystery knit along for Skane Bear's Christmas mittens and um or she, she calls it Christmas Eve because I think Jukveld is Christmas Eve or so the night before Christmas or something like that um it's all if you go to her her Ravelry page and check out um the pattern um it, it explains everything um so that pattern has three colors and um Ellie actually came to New York and stayed with me for a couple days uh was it last week yes it was last week last well this week that just passed was thanksgiving so it was the week before thanksgiving so i basically said hey wherever you want to go i'll take two days off of work and i'll just take you wherever you want to go so i will give you more story about that whole experience um she actually has her version of the story on her podcast you should check her out skein their knits um and she actually told me you must use this yarn because this would be really really good for the for the um, knit along so i'm like okay twist my arm why don't you we're in my one of my favorite knitting stores why the heck not <laughs> so i purchased the yarn and i i wound it and i just have to cast on but there's a latvian braid that i've never done so i have to just do a little more research to get started on that but um and my hardest part was picking colors because there are three colors first part is two color then it goes into two different colors and it you know the foreground becomes the background and it's like ah, uh, what do i do so it's just i think in my head i've picked the colors so i am going to go forth with that and you should probably be able to see an image of that in the next um the next podcast episode she's actually up to the third release of the clues in the pattern so she made it so that the clues will come out a little bit early but you'll have time throughout december to knit them just in time for christmas eve so um don't feel like oh my god i can't start this yet you can and you should they're actually really really beautiful so i would highly suggest you checking out skein there and it's jukeveld it's spelled j-u-k-e no jukeveld no yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah. J-U-L-E-K-V-E-L-D. I'm going to put it on down at the bottom because I can't remember off the top of my head. Sorry, guys. Norwegian isn't my first language. But it is very interesting. And I really want to learn how to say certain things properly. Um, so, uh, yes. thanks, Thank you, Ellie, again, for uh, creating this knit along. And thank you for uh, just giving me this bug now that I have to have stranded knitting in my life because I've been going crazy. You will see um, in the haul that, um, the haul section that, um, yeah, I've gone a little bit crazy over the stranded dye, the stranded yarn, um, knitting. What am I saying? You know, you guys know what I mean. Anyway, um, so what else? I think we can, I can show off an FO and then we can get to whips and then we can talk about the haul and then I can tell you about my life and why things have been crazy. So 
let me start with my first whip um just hold on one second i'm gonna put this big computer over here oh okay it's safe now okay so my work my sorry my um fo sorry so my finished object is what i'm wearing right now it is called the painting sweater i'm gonna try to just uh, here we go and whoo -do, -do, do do i love this sweater guys okay so this sweater is, the designer is katrina Sh katrin schneider katrin schneider um i started this as part of a knit along for uh it was a fingering weight knit along during the summer run by e garnier of uh on instagram um, Elise is her name. Um, I actually got to hang out with her in Vancouver. She was super cool. We had so much fun and we just got like Just we just hung out and it was just like I was talking to a person that I have known forever and we just had such a cool Just interaction and we went shopping and we went you just we just walked around different parts of Vancouver And it was so lovely to spend time with you Elise um, and, I, and then I saw her in Rhinebeck and I met her mom. It was so cool. So, um, yes, yeah, she had this knit along in the summer for a figuring weight sweater. So this yarn is Isis Fiber Arts, and I received it from Grace of the Traveling, um, Babbles Traveling Yarn Podcast. So Grace was actually flying to New York before we went to Edinburgh from Vancouver. If you will go back into Edinburgh uh, video, you'll see that I received this really sparkly pink yarn. So Grace gave me the yarn. Um, she, she brought it for me because to avoid paying shipping. So um, I was so gracious and thankful for it. And then she gave me two extra skeins. And she's like, oh, you can make a finger ring weight sweater. And I'm like, this is so cool. So I actually bought one more skein just in case because I like to lengthen my sweaters a little bit and lengthen the sleeves. So, um, so I had four skeins and I ended up with like I must have I barely touched the last game so um, I do have enough to make a pair of socks if I want to or maybe a sock head hat to go with it we'll see but um painting sweater Isis Fiber Arts is the um, brand of yarn and it is um, a glittery check out that glitter oh come on here we go it's the Dianthus colorway and look at that glitter. Isn't it beautiful? Now, I'm wearing it unblocked because um, if you would focus, camera. Focus. Thank you. I'm wearing it unblocked because I didn't block it because I finished it the day before I went to Knit City. Yeah, like 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So that, you guys know, that's how I, that's how I roll. So, um, yeah, but I really love this sweater. Okay, I had to start the camera again. I really love this sweater. Um, it's actually making me really hot right now because <sighs> it's hot in here. And it, it's, it's a lightweight wool sweater, but it's very, very warm. And um, what else can I say about it? It's a raglan increase, boat neck. Well, boat neck to me. Um, and there's short row shaping in the back, so the back portion of the neck is a little higher than the front. So you have a, this, you know, it's not like pulling on the side here. You have a little bit of, you know, movement in there. And um, I think the sizing I came up with was pretty on point. Um, I can't remember what size I knit. You'd have to check my Ravelry um, pages for that. Um, I, I think I was going for a 38 bust. Um, yeah, so what can I say it was an easy peasy um, sweater that took a little longer than I wanted it to but hey it's done and I love it and I'm happy with it and we're good to go so I will head off to my works in progress so I'm gonna start with the big one Michelle Wong you're my sweet friend I love you I love your cables you know this because I've already did one of your sweaters. So I decided that I'm going to be crazy and knit the Aspen sweater for Rhinebeck. Now we all know that that didn't happen because I wore this during Rhinebeck. Um, I think if I didn't start school and God made a day between Saturday and Sunday, I would have been able to finish. 
and maybe I could have done with a, a day between Friday and Saturday too. That would have helped. But since we can't get God to do our bidding, <laughs> I just had to like deal with it. So luckily I didn't finish it because I would have worn that and have totally evaporated because Rhinebeck was totally, totally hot. Like I had to rip this sweater off and I had on a t-shirt. But um, yeah, so okay, before, okay, let's let's just talk about the sweater, shall we? So the Aspen cardigan, I knit it out of Peace Fleece, and the color is Georgia Rose. I'm going to start with the pieces because it's it's all in pieces still. Um, all right, so I have a portion of a sleeve. So I started with this sleeve as my swatch because. My gauge was just a little bit, a, little, a lot off. Um, I went down two needle sizes. This yarn is thick, but it wasn't, I don't know, for some reason, it, it just wasn't working out right. So I was like, okay, let me just knit a sleeve in what I think it will be and see if it works. And it did. So if this sleeve is actually, you know, done, done, it'll fit. So here's a little closer for the cables again absolutely gorgeous cables and I've gotten really used to the pattern repeats so it's not mindless but it's not so difficult that it can't be done you can do it you just have to really just mark everything in the chart and remember on this chart a versus chart B Chart A goes up to a certain number and B will keep going and then you have to, okay, so when I'm on this row on chart A, I'm on this row on chart B. And then you just keep going. So once you can keep that in order, you're good to go. So what I did complete, let's see if I can pull it out without ripping anything. Uh, okay, so I have the front, the fronts done. This is the pocket that is a working pocket. I just have to <laughs> sew in the back portion of it. And the back is totally done. And my friends are like, we're like, you're knitting a robe. You know that, right? You're knitting a robe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I still want it. <laughs> so I am this, I don't know how I managed to get the back done in like a week. Or I don't even know I was just like knitting like a maniac and let me tell you when you I don't I don't recommend stress knitting for anyone and I always seem to be doing it for um, some sort of knitting for Rhinebeck or for Vogue or something so I'm at the point right now where I had to take a break from cables which is why I started the Clark pullover for Nana Suimo and you'll see that soon but I mean it's gorgeous so I, I just have to, I'm going to get back onto it, guys, because I actually want to wear this for Vogue Knitting Live. So what I did is I picked up the button band, and I'm working on that right now. And once the button band is done, the sleeves will be finished. This is my second sleeve. So it's not really much, but we'll get there. Um... And I really hope to have this done for Vogue Knitting Live. And I spoke to Christy and she let me know that Michelle's having a pre-Vogue Knitting something going on. Um, so I'm hoping that I can get to attend and have it done in time for that. And this is also part of the, um, the Knit Along for Outlander because when Michelle, sorry, not Michelle, <laughs> when, uh, what is her name in the book? Why is this escaping me right now? Okay, main character of the book goes through the stones and she comes to underneath an aspen tree and the name of this is Aspen. So there you go. Um, so <laughs> I'm thinking Katrina Belf, that's the actress's name. I cannot remember the name of the character for the life of me. What is wrong with me? Claire, duh, Jamie and Claire, duh. Anyway, yeah, so Claire was underneath an aspen tree. The name of this is Aspen, so it fits. So that is my big, big, big project. So aside from that, I made a second project for the Outlander Knit Along. I started this um, 
can't remember when. But this, okay, this yarn is from Yarn Over New York in the Broadway base. I can't remember the name of it right now off the top of my head. But it's perfect for me because it's pink. This was a gift from Elisa of Knit Spin Quilt, who also makes really cute project bags. So yeah, this yarn is Yarn Over New York. And there's a little bit of glitter in it. And I made, started making focus camera. Come on. <laughs> I started making the Fergus socks. And Fergus is a character that we meet when Claire and Jamie go to France. And this was designed by Anna Freeberg, my friend that I met in Edinburgh. <laughs> so uh, I really love this pattern and I love the way it looks with these socks and I'm actually at the gusset part right now so I'm working on this right over here you can see the gusset forming um, beautiful pattern I I have to finish this for the outline and it along so these are like my two next things that I'm going to try to get done um, before the knit along ends because I actually want to actually finish it in time for knit along because I still have time guys. So next work in progress, the Clark pullover. Yes, not the Clark socks, but I will be casting those on too. Thank you so much, Jacqueline, for creating them. But there's the Clark with an E, which is how you spell my last name, pullover by Jane Richmond. And this pullover is originally a striped pullover, but I couldn't resist. I needed to utilize my La Bienna Me yarn that I got in Ambra. And I just love this. Look at that. Look at these speckles. Absolutely beautiful. Amy, you are an amazing dyer. I actually met Amy during Rhinebeck for the second time because I met her in Edinburgh. And I got to hang out with her and she is so much fun to hang out with. And yes, I'm definitely coming to Paris. Just got to plan it right. But I will be there and I will learn as much French as I can and hang out with you. I cannot wait. Um, so, the yarn is a joy to knit with. I'm going to hold this up here. So... I think I can actually finish this sweater because the body is basically done. It's just sleeves. And what I did is I had some Miss Babs yarn left over from a previous sweater that I wore to Rhinebeck a couple years ago. So I'm deciding to do the, the ribbed edge with this color pink and also do the neckline and the cuffs with pink. So this sweater, if I can do everything I need to do, will be done, gosh, by Thursday. I can't believe December is like creeping up on us so fast already. So, mm, oh my goodness. Um, yeah, so I have a lot of knitting to do. I have about 30,000 stitches already done, a little more than 30,000. So I have to really like push hard on this. But I mean, as soon as I finish the button band, which I'm actually binding off right, I mean, sorry, the hem that I'm actually binding off right now, I'll just do the front hem. And that's only 10 rows. And then I will pick up and knit my uh, sleeves. So that should be, that should be good enough, right? Um, I'll get that done. I hope. I want to. I really, really want to. So, um, yeah, so I've already separated into half ball half like 50 gram skeins for the sleeves so that the sleeves can match each other and not like the sweater won't look all wonky so i'm a little bit um acd like, like that but it's okay okay so i'm on to another um work in progress and oh okay it is in my knit spin quilt bag that i got from my wonder woman bag that i got from knit spin quilt <sighs> she had actually made these bags for Shrinking Studio and she was about to like give them to the older Felicia and I was like, wait, that one's mine. Don't, no, it's not for sale. It's mine. I'm going to give you the money right now. So 
This is her information. Oops. Oops. All right, let's try to get a little close. Here we go. So she makes a lot of really, really cool project bags as well as stitch markers. So you should definitely check her shop out um, and check out her Instagram. And um, she's a prolific knitter as well. So if you want to check out her Ravelry page and just get inspired, by all means, just do it because she's amazing. Um, so I am making a little baby something for um, my friend. Um, her baby shower was last weekend and I didn't have it completed because I'm working on Nana Suimo and it's like a toss up between the two projects. But I did give her a gift card and I did tell her and her boyfriend that um, she's going. she has a handmade gift, you know, in the works. And her boyfriend, I think, was a little more excited than she was, which I was found to be shocking. But I thought that was totally really cool. So um, I am making it with Snuggly Spots DK that I purchased at String Things Studio. It is acrylic um, and I'm totally okay with that. It's actually nylon and acrylic together and it is made for Sirdar, um, Sirdar yarn, but it's made in England, Turkey, England. Yeah, you know how these yarn companies, they, they, they have these things where they, they work things among, amongst each other in different countries. But um, I really like this yarn. It knits up like, it looks like um, funfetti cake to me. So I decided to make a dress because they're having a little girl and I know she's gonna be so adorable. And this is the Helen Joyce dress by Tyga Hilliard. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, Tyga Hilliard, Tyga, T-A-I-G-A. I hope I got your name right. I'm so sorry if I didn't. Um, she's actually the one that started Get Your Wishes Granted. So I have a few wishes that I received and I wanna thank those people. Um, I will in a little bit, but I wanna go through my haul. But, um, but yeah, so this is the little baby dress and there's a heart motif on the front. And there's going to be hearts, two rows of hearts on the bottom. So this is in the works. It's um, actually written for fingering weight, but what I'm doing is I'm making the zero to three month in DK weight so that it's just a little bit bigger. Um, and it's one of those dresses that will become a tunic, will become a shirt as the baby grows longer. So I'm gonna try to find um, one of the colors in here try to find um, leggings to go with it. So it'll be a cute little outfit for the baby. And I can't wait till she comes. She's due early next year. So um, I think all will be well and um, she's gonna have a cute little dress and I can't wait to snuggle with her. So what else do we have going on? Let me find some more yarn to show you. And what else do I have? Yeah, yarn haul purchases and then my stories. So I will be back. I'm gonna get started with my most recent um, acquisitions and then I'll go back to the Rhinebeck and then kind of taper off with all my Rhinebeck speak. So I, yes, so my recent acquisitions came through Ellie from Skandare Knits as she came to visit me. So this is kind of a funny story. <laughs> so Ellie found this book that is a historic take on Estonian knitting and basically they found artifacts and recreated those patterns based on those artifacts so you can actually knit what people in the past the same exact designs they have actually worn and I really love it when you know people can create whatever they can create what their minds can drum up you know but I also love to go back to the basics to go back to historically what you know the people at that time based on whatever types of yarn they had or whatever tools they had they can create so um i had ordered the book and it's on isolda's website and it was like 40 pounds to send to the u.s so i was just like oh my god that's more than the cost of the actual book well this is i ordered two books as well no two books and len magazine so 
I was just like, oh, so I, told, I spoke to Ellie about it. She's like, why don't you just send it to me and then I can bring it on my way to your house. I was like, oh yeah, that's great. So I did that. And the morning that Ellie was supposed to leave um, the UK, I still hadn't received a notification that it was delivered. So I was like, mm, womp womp. So I was like, okay, fine. I'll just pay the extra whatever. When you get back to the UK, you can send me the, the, um, the package. So she walks into my house and this is the first thing that she gives me. She's like, I had this book. I didn't touch it. It's like she bought it. This is the birth, you know, what started the conversation when she bought this book and she did not even like, like it's brand new. She didn't do anything to it. And she gave it to me because she felt bad that my book is still in transit. So thank you so much, Ellie. You are such a sweetheart. I really, really appreciate what you've done. Cause I'm just like, I, I, I just wanted this book really, really badly. And it's here. It's mine. I can read it now. I can make stuff from it. So it's totally, totally cool. And it's like a reference book as well because of the whole historical thing behind everything. I just, I'm just really, really, really happy. So, um, aside from the book, Ellie, she walks and she's like, oh, and I have this for you too. And it's absolutely beautiful. She brought this yarn for me. Norwegian yarn. <sighs> Rauma Strik Gun. I think that's how you say it. Or Strik Gun. I don't know how to pronounce it. But it doesn't matter because I'm super duper excited to have it. So this yarn is what she would highly recommend for her selbu mittens that I am going to make. <laughs> So I think I'm going to make, um, I bought, um, well, actually, no, I didn't buy it. I actually had it on my get your wishes granted and I got my wish granted. So I have the Selma Mittens knit along, uh, the whole ebook. So I have a bunch of mittens, mittens to make now. So this is going to be my first one that I'm going to try. And she has one with a pattern called Flora. So it's like a flower pattern. So this, I mean, pink flowers. I mean, come on guys. Like this is just beautiful and perfect. Could not be any more perfect. Thank you so much, Ellie. And she also brought me cozy wool. And I think this came from Australia. Yes. So, of course, pink. Love it. And she also bought me Ask. And I have to figure out where... Okay, where is it from? Because this is, oh, this is a Norwegian wool as well. Oh, how did I get so lucky to get wool from around the world? And, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, I'm just, I'm just beside myself at just how knitting has connected me to so many people and so many regions of the world. Things that you would read about, things that you would just see, you know, online. I actually have in my palm of my hand right now and it's, you know, this yarn is really toothy and I cannot wait to do color work with this because that's what it's made for. I mean, it's just, it's just beautiful. Um, and this is British 100, um, 100 gram BFL from Erica Knight. So, woohoo, this could make a hat, I think. Um, I don't know, we'll see, we'll find out. We'll, a, a pattern will hit me and I will, I will get to it. Um, oh. So that is, oh, so I have to show you one more thing that Ellie has um, had me um, fall in love with. So we went to Nitty City on our tour of New York and New Jersey, but the second day, first day was Jersey, second day was New York. So we went to Nitty City and you know, every time I go to Nitty City, I'm just like, I'm buying, <sighs> the Madeline Tosh, I'm buying, I bought Neighborhood Fibers from there, I've looked at a bunch of Koigu, um, or I just like whatever grabs me, whatever sock yarn. I'm mostly a sock yarn girl. I did, I have bought a sweaters quantity of Malabrigo there before, so I'm not gonna lie. I, sweaters quantity and socks, those are the things that usually grab me, and it's usually merino wool type things. And Ellie saw this yarn and it was like, you have to get this. So this is 100% North American Shetland wool. I'm gonna, 
it's called Elemental Effects. This is the button, um, the, the band. Here we go. Alrighty, it's a little, a little sheepy sheep right there. Um, so these are the three colors that I purchased. And this was actually a very economical purchase because for less than 20 bucks, you have three skeins that you can do color work with. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I think the color work mittens will be perfect. And this is what I'm going to use for the knit along for Jukveld. Hopefully I'm saying that right. <laughs> so I am very happy to have spent time with Ellie and to have learned so much. Um, what is every day to her with knitting this stranded color work? I'm just in awe of. Like, we're on the train. She's knitting color work. We're just, you know, walking around. She's knitting color work. And I'm just like, I have to have like a quiet room, sit still, and like nobody bug me, stop calling my phone, stop texting me. Why are these Instagram messages going off? I just have to focus. And she's just like, la la la, walking around, knitting, color work. <sighs> amazing absolutely amazing but you know when that's when you're when you're in your groove and that's what you do that's what you do so I totally Ellie thank you so much for oh just 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 passing on your knowledge and just making beautiful patterns please keep making the mittens I want to see a hat too like that would be awesome um and whenever you decide to make that sweater you make that sweater because I will totally buy it. Um, what else do I want to get into? Um, I want to get into get your wishes granted. So I received the Japanese knitting stitch dictionary from her name is Katie. Um, and she, you know, I said, let me just put it out there and see if anyone wants to grant me a wish. Because I've, I have I wanted to grant some wishes as well. I did this last year and it was a lot of fun. So um, I just put it out there and I said, I don't know if anyone's really going to get a book for me. But hey, let's just see what happens. And I kid you not, I was putting in my third wish and the second wish was granted. Like within five minutes. And oh my god, let me get it. The Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible. I mean... So I had found out about this from um, Chanel of the Piper Nell podcast because she was actually um, in China when it was released in Chinese. So she purchased it because she was like, she can really practice her Chinese and um, she can still knit and it's an amazing book. And I was like, oh my God, I gotta get it. Like, oh my God. So <sighs> I'm so happy to have it. I mean, let's see if I could, can I just like, these cable patterns and these these are just random ones that I'm just showing and they what I love about it is the, like all these instructions like there th like there's all these different notations in Japanese knitting that I have never seen before and I feel so happy to have something that will help me interpret it um, I do have Japanese friends who I can call and say, hey, what does this say? But it feels really good to be able to figure it out yourself. You know, it feels like, wow, this new world is opening up to me. So if I can do that and make something with it, oh, I'll be so happy. So thank you so much, Katie, for sending this to me. I am really, really, really happy. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, what else do I want to show? I can show. Oh, so. Let's, let's backtrack to when Ellie was here. We went to uh, Frame and Fiber, which is in Point Pleasant Beach, New Jersey. The last, I heard it's the last stop on the Jersey Shore. It was quite a drive. It was equivalent to driving to Rhinebeck for me, distance wise. But it didn't bother me because um, I wanted to meet Paige again. I saw her in Rhinebeck and it was kind of brief. Um, and I didn't get to really, really hang out with her because there was just a lot going on. So, um, Paige, I'm so happy you invited us. And she actually is closed on a Tuesday, but it's she's open. She opens it for um, special people. So, where are 
super special. So sweet. <laughs> yes, she's so sweet. She um the store's closed on Tuesdays and she opened it specifically for us, so I just let her know, "Hey, we're leaving Brooklyn now. I'm on my way to you." Um we got kind of uh went on the wrong path like once. I kind of like those highways man it's like you're on the left side then it tells you go to the right then go to the left and then you're like which way am i supposed to be and then you have like one little lane that you're supposed to be on it goes that way and you're still going this way and i'm like oops so turn around found our way back but we got there um and i bought oh, she has some stunning yarn there but this trip for me was a total vkn experience because Okay, so if those of you who do not know what VKN means, it's Virtual Knit Night. And Grace of the Babbles Traveling Yarn podcast had started it right before we went to Edinburgh. So while we're on this Virtual Knit Night, we get to speak to people all over the world. That's how me and Ellie have gotten close. I've also spoken to people, aside from the UK, I've spoken to people in Greece. Um, I've spoken to people in Australia, in, uh, I mean, Sweden, um, oh, Canada, all over Canada, basically, um, on the west coast of the United States. So it's really a huge, huge deal. And when you meet people because you've been on VKN in real life, it's like, oh my God, give me a big hug. I haven't, I feel like, I feel like, you know, you're my best friend and I just haven't seen you in a long time, but I saw you yesterday on camera. It's kind of weird, but it's cool and it's amazing. So, okay, needless to say, um, so when I went to the Toronto, Toronto Knitters Guild, SS came up to me and she's like, Shamika, and I'm like, hey, how's it going? Um, and sh she's a dyer of Critium Handmade, so, you know, I haven't gotten a chance to really, really get to purchase anything. And then she hasn't been on VKN in a while, but she's just been really busy. So it felt really good when I went to Paige's shop. Paige is also on our on our virtual knit night as well um, to see Critty Handmade Yarn. And this is Santa's workshop. And it looks self-striping to me. So I'm going to assume that it is because I can't really um find any um real uh text about it because it was on her etsy shop and then it sold out so i can't see what the description is but i must if it's i'm assuming i'm just assuming that it is i could be wrong but i want to see how it knits up anyway so this is going to be what i use for my christmas eve cast on and i know there's a christmas eve kl going around somewhere <sighs> Stranded Dye Works, I think, is running it. Um, but I have to find out the real deal. So I will let you guys know closer to Christmas. Um, but yeah, Critium Handmade. And this is the Kamal Wow Socks. Superwash Merino and Nylon. 420 yards. Critium Handmade.etsy. Let's see if you can. And it's uh, Santa's Workshop. So, I'm very happy to have bought this yarn. Paige had a bunch of yarns that I wanted to try. Like, I wanted to try so much, but I'm really, really, really trying to be strict with my yarn budget because I have a tuition budget now. So, mm, yeah, that's a whole nother story. But, um, this was my little treat to myself that day. And then, we went to Do You Knit. And of course I had to buy something to knit. So I got a pair of circus tonic handmade. And you know, you guys know I'm a bright, bright pink person, but I really wanted this blush soft pink. And I think this will be perfect for the Clark socks that Jacqueline Salem has designed. So Jacqueline, this is to you. And it's really funny because after we left, do you knit? I went and hung out with Jacqueline and Kristen and Chanel and Ellie and we went to get burrata at Eastwick which was so much fun. I was so hungry. I think I ate more than everybody at the table but yeah whatever. It's all good. The food is delicious. So I did that and I got one more self stripey thingy 
and that is this is called Mango Tango from Lollipop Yarn. So, so those of you who don't know, Do You Knit, like we all know, Do You Knit has a slew of indie dyers. Like she's majority indie dyer. Now she's probably like 95% indie dyer, right? So when something doesn't sell as fast as she wants it to, she'll just move it into this room off to the side. The whole room is 50% off and it's just amazing i mean she has so much amazing yarn it's like speckle explosion in there there's hedgehog there's yushishita there's um spun right round there i mean yarn gas um and vine yarns has had her trunk show there a million times and then she has all these different trunk shows going on she just had pink friday for during black friday and like i couldn't even go because i was just like too tired from Thanksgiving so sorry but I would have loved to have gone um but yeah like that shop is insane like you cannot go in there and not buy something like you just can't so it's one of those treat yourself moments so mango tango is my my treat yourself and um I want to do a year of self-striping next year like a year of self-striping socks so this is going to add to my collection of self-striping um so yeah, so there you go. Uh, those were my acquisitions from Ellie's trip to New York. So let's get to Rhinebeck, shall we? Somewhere along the past month, it's been my podiversary because my first podcast was about my last Rhinebeck experience and the experience of making the sweater. And that propelled me to get started on this podcasting thought that I had in my mind and I was just like oh my god are people gonna watch it are people gonna like listening to me I don't know but I'm gonna try anyway and I was just in shock as to how many people were interested in the sweater how many people were interested in watching me just talk about my daily life and my knitting and how many people I inspire and how many people want to meet me so I was just like totally thrilled so last Rhinebeck I was like fangirling over meeting other podcasters and this year I was the podcaster and it was just kind of surreal um I was still fangirling for meeting people who I've gotten to know um also meeting people like I said face to face that I've seen on virtual knit nights or seen on their podcasts and got to like really like you know interact with them and like the main thing for me I was nervous too but I'd be like oh I'd see people like Oh my god, Shamika. And I'm like, give me a hug. That totally killed all the nerves. Like, it was just like, you're my friend from how long ago? Like, let's just hang out, you know? And it was just, it just made life so much calmer, so much more fun. I really, really, I, for two hours, I was literally just hugging and taking pictures. And I could not have spent my time any better than that. Um, I didn't even buy much in Rhinebeck because I didn't walk around. I didn't go through all the barns. I went to who I knew I was going to buy from. Like I said, I'm in school again, so I had a budget. And I was just like, I cannot break this. This is it for me. I don't want to get tempted by many other things. Although Rhinebeck is all well and beautiful. And if I had thousands of dollars to spend, I would have totally blown it on everything. But I got the essentials. I got what I really wanted. And the most important thing was that I got to connect with everybody. So if I saw you in Rhinebeck and gave you a big hug, trust me, that was genuine. I really, really was excited and happy to meet you. And there were some people like I wanted to talk to longer, but someone was pushed, pulling me, can I take a picture? And I didn't want to like shortchange anyone on, on time. So I wish I could have just hugged everybody at the same time and took a big, huge picture with everyone, but I couldn't, but, um, I got to interact with everyone and I'm very, very, very happy. And thank you so much for if you said hi, if you reached out, if you took a picture, if you just said, I want to introduce myself, whatever. I'm so thankful and so happy to have met you. Um, I will, I have a slew of pictures I could put at the end of this thing with everyone that I've met. Um, it felt really good to see like the knitters I hung out with at Toronto Knitters Frolic and the knitters I hung out with in Vancouver and Knit City that I got to see in New York. That was like so much fun to hang out with. Even if I only saw you for a glimpse, I was just so happy. Um, 
yeah, so let me get to the yarn. How about that? So my first purchase was the pre-order for, oh gosh, La Bien Ame. La Bien Ame. So this colorway is Autumn and Rhinebeck. And I hope I said that properly. All I have to say is, when I saw this posted at the Indie Untangled, on the Indie Untangled website, I immediately bought, was it Force Games? Because, oh, this is going to be, is it Force Games? Yeah, it's Force Games. Force Games. Something's gonna fall. Okay, stop, don't fall. Okay, Force Games. This is gonna be a fingering weight sweater. So I want this to be the Piece of Silver by Vera Valamaki. Um, I love this color, it's so soft, um, which is why I need to get my Lend Magazine from the UK. So I'm gonna have to call Ellie and try to figure out how I'm gonna get my package. Mm -hmm. So this will be the sweater and this yarn from Asylum Fibers, um, Ryan Beck's All the Craze will be the edging for the neck, as well as the cuffs, as well as the hem. So I think this will just go totally great. Um, totally great, yeah. This will be awesome. And it's not pink, but hey, sometimes you have to get away a little bit from your comfort zone to enjoy all that the world has to offer. So this is just absolutely beautiful. Amy and Stephanie, you dye amazing yarn. I'm so happy to call you my friends. I'm so happy to know you. I'm so happy to have heard the stories of different things that have happened um, with you dyeing yarn and just, you know, just these are real women who decided to just, just on a whim, like, you know what? I'm gonna start this business. I love dyeing this yarn and they, they're following their passion and I feel so happy and proud to help support them. So it's a really beautiful thing. <laughs> and another woman that I like to support is Karita of Neighborhood Fiber Company. So I purchased, hold on, let me get this out of the bag. The bag is like falling, laying on the ground and not standing up still. Anyway, I purchased three skeins of DuPont Circle and I was sitting there in front like I'm like I wanted a rose gold color for this particular sweater because I fell in love with rose gold when I went to Vancouver but you know when you're looking for one color but you know the color is somewhere else it's in another country eh, what am I gonna do I'm gonna have to place another order but this was what was in front of me and I'm standing there, I'm choosing between this color and there were a few other colors. And I'm standing next to Laura's Rain and he's like, Shamika, get the pink. It's you. I'm like, okay, I guess that's it then. So pink, purple, DuPont circle. This is going to be the Skaha sweater designed by Marsha Ibuki. I, she's another um, virtual knit night um, participant that I met in person in um, Vancouver and I was like, when I saw her so it was pretty awesome that uh, I got to see her and I saw her again at Rhinebeck so I'm gonna make her sweater and um, I would have made it for Nana Suimo but I was short by like a thousand stitches for the 50,000 stitch mark I mean <sighs> rules right so this is going to be something that I'm gonna make later on um, pr probably around January maybe I can cast it on right before I broke knitting um, Hopefully, yeah, after I finish my Aspen, I can totally cast this on. And it's made in the round for the bottom up, or is it top down? I can't remember, but I think it's bottom up. And um, I'll have another sweater. So this was another Rhinebeck purchase. Um, then I ran into Leslie of Rosehaven Yarns. I had met her initially at the um, uh, Toronto Knit is Frolic and we had such a great conversation and she was inviting me to this beautiful retreat like in the middle of Canada like in a, at a lakeside but it's in November it happened already 
But um, it was my mom's birthday weekend, so I was like, I couldn't go. I felt so bad, even though I would have loved to have gotten away. Um, but, now this was right before Halloween, right? So her husband is an illustrator. Do you guys see this sock like? It's amazing. Frankenstein and Little Witch, Black Cat, Pumpkin. So, yeah, beautiful sock blank. I'm so happy to have been gifted this. Thank you so much, Leslie. Um, so, you guys need to check out Rosehaven yarn. Like, it's gorgeous, the yarns that they have. And she's actually coming out with a new, what's she called? Bad Girl Yarns. So, this is the the logo bad girl yarn so she's she's actually trying to change her branding to this she wants to do things that are a little more badass <laughs> so um yeah so check it out like this is beautiful i don't even i want to knit it but i don't want to knit it because it's too pretty like oh my god the the amount of beautiful work that goes into this i don't want to pull it apart but i want to see what the socks look like <laughs> i'm gonna blather now about what why you haven't seen me where have i been what have i been doing what's been going on so um after edinburgh i was like first of all the jet lag and then i got sick afterwards and i was just like okay tomorrow i'll go through the footage tomorrow i go I'll go through the footage and that became months because it's still a lot of footage to go through that I just have to like sit down and actually do it. But every time I try to sit down and actually do it and I need like a good four hours to really go through everything and be able to create a really good um, version of a video with all the editing, someone calls me to do something or I only have two hours because I have to go to work or I have to do this or I have to do that. Now, another thing that has happened, like I work eight in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon. And two days out of the week now, I started school. I go to graphic design school. So two days out of the week, I'm coming home at 11 p.m. And then the other two days out of the week, I'm in knitting group. And which really leaves me Saturday and Sunday to work on any podcasting projects or any video editing projects. And we've had some changes at my job where we've lost some staff members. So we're kind of like on thin ice right now. So on thin ice meaning, um, not really on thin ice, I would say it's just a really low staff level and the work is not less work so we're overworking ourselves everyone so it we do a rotational weekend where we actually have to go into the office depending on how many things they need done so i could think that oh tomorrow i'll podcast and oh man i didn't realize that i have to be on call this week and luckily um i haven't really been called to stay late or to stay the full shift but I've there's been times where my internet at home has been a little wonky so I had to actually go into the office so that I can have uh, you know a stable internet connection and then after that I'm just like oh I just want to go home and then I come home I'm tired dealing with the train dealing with transportation especially on the weekend it's uh, it could be a little testy so you know then I said okay we need sunlight let me record on days where I'm home, like a holiday. So I remember Memorial Day weekend. I was like, yes, Memorial Day. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just gonna stay home and I'm gonna record. So in the nighttime, I decided to have some really sweet wine with some uh, lasagna. And I got really, really sick. It wasn't hangover sick. It was more like food poisoning sick. And I thought that oh my God, this wine is bad. And it was wine from Rhinebeck, like the honey wine. And I dumped it. And 
I actually found out from Laura, who is uh, the a crocheting Hoovian podcast. We had a discussion about it. She's Italian, so she let me know. She's like, you can't have all that sweet wine with all that cheese and, you know, it'll ferment and make you sick. Yeah, yeah. I figured this out way after the fact. But um, thank you, Laura, for letting me know. I will not make that mistake again. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that hindered me um, recording. And then it's just been a, a lot of days where it's like, I'll say I'm going to record tomorrow and then something will happen and it'll just be like, geez, am I ever going to get to record? And then I run into, you know, people, are you going to record again? Are you okay? Is everything all right? No, I didn't fall off the first of the earth. I'm here. Life has just been crazy. Um, aside from that, you, you may have seen, um, I may have posted on Instagram a few times. Um, we, my mom loves to cook and people ask us to cook for baby showers and oh, retirement parties and just what have you so um i end up helping her i'm her only daughter i'm her only child so a lot of it falls on me so when i come home from work i have to put my chef gloves on and start cutting up carrots and what other whatever else needs to be done in the food prep stage so after i do all of that food prep i'm so tired i really can't be this bubbly personality that i am for the podcast and i don't ever want to give you a lower sense of who i am i want to show you who i am on a really good day because who wants to come on a podcast and see somebody like falling asleep and being all like oh well you know blah blah blah, blah. no that's not me. I want to give you the, 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 the amazing, exciting me that is happy about yarn and happy about knitting. So those are the reasons it took me forever. I promise you, you will have the Edinburgh footage. It'll be like a flashback. Um, I also, I want to do Vlogmas. Um, I'll see how much I can get done. Um, I'll see if I can find some cool, interesting things within New York City that you might be interested in seeing, especially around Christmas time. New York is so beautiful around Christmas. Um, I know Jacqueline as well has decided to do her Vlogmas and I know she's good for finding things in New York as well. So if you're really into like the New York Christmas scene, I'd ask, you, I'd tell you to check her channel out as well. Um, so, but you know, we'll probably have different viewpoints cause she lives on one side of Brooklyn and I'm on the other. So there's so much we can cover together. So, um, yeah, so I want to do vlogmas. I, it's something when I saw everyone doing it last year, I was like, oh my God, why didn't I think of this? So now I'm, yeah, I'm going to do it. I want to do it. So we'll see how far that goes. I hope my life, my day to day life isn't too boring. <laughs> But I will try to find things that um, are exciting and I'll show off my projects day by day and we'll see how things go. Um, what else? What else can I say? Uh, Black Friday happened and I bought yarn from Holst Yarn. I actually have plans to make the flea cardigan by Pinigori, the Damiakalopa. Um, I saw Ellie wearing hers. I saw Kristen's. And I'm just like, oh, well, I didn't see Kristen's in person, but I saw it, you know, she had finished her sleeve and I was just like, oh my God, this is beautiful. So I had to have one. So my colors will be gray and pink um, with a little bit of white in there or cream, if you want to call it. Um, so I ordered the yarn um, on Black Friday because Holst Yarn had a 20% off uh, Black Friday sale. I'm not sure if it's still going on, but you know, it happened Black Friday. So I ordered that and I'm waiting for the yarn to get here. So once that arrives, I will be able to show you. Um, and I also created my color, you know, my color spectrum for the, for the pattern. So based off of an interpretation from the original designer's color work. So that should be really interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to that. That's like my next big thing. And what else? What else? What else? What else? There is hmm, one more knit along that I, why did I forget this? Okay. There is a knit along called the Eve along. 
So I'm going to, this might probably be the last sock that I make for the year. Um, actually, I want to go through my box of socks next episode. So stay tuned for that. But the Eva Long is you make the sock tube toe to toe. And then you do the afterthought heel and an afterthought cuff on the toe, on the sock. So I think this goes all the way to the end of the year. I have to double check. But if you go on Instagram, Eva Long KL, you can find it. It's something put together by Eve who lives in Cornwall. She is actually on our virtual knit night and she mentioned it and we all were like, yeah, 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 let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. So um, I have to find yarn um, and once I cast on, I will show you. But um, yeah, try to find her on Instagram. Um, try to find the, the hashtag on Instagram, Eve Along, and see what's up with that. Um, Grace from the Babbles Traveling Yarn podcast is another person promoting it as well. She's, she's gotten really far with her socks. Mars from uh, Brownberry um, podcast and Dynamic Yarns, um, sh Dynamics Yarns, she is also doing it as well. So uh, yeah, check it out. Oh, what else? I mean, this is so much, but I don't want to um, bombard you guys. My battery's gonna die. I've been talking for quite a while and I just want to say all together, thank you all so much for sticking with me. Thank you so much for just reaching out, messaging me, just checking on me. Um, yeah, I'm here. I've been just having a really, really crazy busy life, but I know that's no excuse for having you be so far away from me for so long. So I'm happy to be back and I want to make this more of a thing that happens more often. Um, so I, which is why I think I need to do Vlogmas so that you can see my day to day because I know you guys have missed me so long and I've missed interacting with you. Um, I have a few things coming up, so, um, it'll be nice. So thank you once again for watching. Um, if I missed anything, I will try to sneak it into the next episode. Um, follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. I started doing some Instagram stories so that you guys can see what's going on in between podcasts. So yeah, um, I'm so happy to be back and I'm so happy that you guys are here and um, happy knitting everyone. And like I always say, embellish your knitting, embellish your life. <laughs>